Hey, everybody, and welcome back. Today, I thought we would talk about apex variables and primitive data types. So we're going to take a little step back from some of the other videos we had been doing, working through some of the trailhead modules and things, and talk about the variables and the primitive data types, because these are, I want you to think of them, they're like the uh, the atoms of all the programs that you're going to write. They're the fundamental building blocks of all the other programming that you'll ever do. And that is true in Apex or any other programming language that you work with. So I think this is going to be a pretty short video, but I thought it'd be worth taking a pause because if you're starting off, this is truly one of the very first things that you need to understand uh, how to do is how to work with your primitives and how to declare and initialize a variable. So let's uh, open up our IDE. Close my anonymous Apex window out. So up here in my comments, we've already declared a class called primitives and a little method to let us work with them. I've added in all the data types and there's 11 in Apex of all of our primitives. Not all of them are we really going to review today, and some of them you won't really work with very often in your day-to-day -day life, or some of them maybe a little when you're a little bit more in the intermediate to advanced in your career. But we start, we have a blob. Uh, blobs is a binary data type, and we really use those if you're working with encryption in the Apex Crypto class or for web services, right? You have, you define some sort of an HTTP method. You need to define the REST response body. You would do that in a blob. Uh, we have Booleans. Booleans, you're going to work with all the time. Booleans hold two values. They can either be true or they can be false. You've got your date and your date time. And these are pretty self-explanatory. Date is a data type that holds a date. And date time is something that holds a date and a time. Then you have your decimal and your double. All right, these hold numbers with a decimal point. And I put 32 and 64 bit there. Uh, what that is is a way of saying they one doubles can hold a larger value in memory than a decimal. Uh, very rarely are you actually going to need to work with doubles, though, unless you're doing very very large uh, calculations. IDs, and that is your normal Salesforce 18 character ID. Then you have integers and longs. And just like your decimals and doubles, these hold numbers, but now without a decimal point. Uh, again, but we have a 32 bit and a 64 bit data type. And what so integers are essentially going to be able to hold any value up to, it's a little over 2 billion. Have to uh, pull up the uh, developer documentation to get the exact number, but not too often are you going to need to work with longs, and that's for numbers over 2 billion. And you have objects. Uh, we're not really going to go into objects today, except that everything we actually work with in Salesforce in one way or another is an object. And strings, and strings are, best way to think of them is just any group of characters inside a set of single quotation marks. It can be letters, it can be numbers, it can be punctuation marks. If it is inside a set of single quotation marks, it is going to be interpreted by Apex as a string. So an Apex, and we're going to discuss what this means to be a statically typed, and it's a case insensitive language. But so first off, if we want to use any of, if we want to make use of any of these primitives, we have to first make, create some sort of a variable to make use of. And how we create a variable in Apex is first we declare the type. So we want to use a, a uh, Boolean. Scroll up here a little bit. First thing we have to do is type the word Boolean. And that tells, hey, that we are going to create a variable and it is going to store this type of data in it. Then we have to give our variable a name. And I'm going to name this one bool. And then we assign a value to it. So what we've really done in the kind of like the world of computer science, when we've declared and initialized this value, is we've said, hey, there's going to be a place in memory, and it's going to store a value of true. And we are going to be able to access that value in memory by using the name bool. We could also declare a variable. These space issues are drive me nuts. We're going to, we could say, we're going to just say Boolean. I'm going to call it bool2. And I could do that. So what I've done is I have initialized, or I've declared a variable, right? I've said, hey, I'm going to do a data type of Boolean. I've gave it a name, but I didn't assign a value to it. 
So Salesforce is going to give that, Apex is going to give that the a value of null which is fine well, you can do that sometimes if you want to declare a variable, but you don't have the data to put into it yet. You just have to be aware that if you then try to start making use of it, you're going to throw errors because there, it's, there's nothing in memory. That, that name bool2 doesn't really reference anything in memory. It just has a value of no. So earlier we talked about one Apex being a statically typed and a case insensitive language. So what that actually means is we, so. It is a capital, and that's best case, best practice. But this would also work if I said Boolean. So my IDE is helping me out, saying, "Hey, you know, like that should be a capital letter." But this would compile. This would work. If, uh, so Apex is not going to give us an error because of capitalization, because of case sens case sensitivity. And this is a little different than JavaScript. And I'm going to split this. So if we're working with a Lightning Web component, right, um, and our JavaScript file. This is how we declare variables in JavaScript, right? So we could do, you know, const letter var, but we have here, we've got a string, an integer, and a Boolean, but I didn't have to say what data type they were in JavaScript. I just named it and I could name it whatever I want, right? But I then I, I put a string into it. I declared a variable named int and I assigned a number to it and I declared, you know, with a bool and I assigned a, a true to it. But I, you know, I could just, you know, hello. Hello too. Whatever. Um, so that's the difference between an apex. You have to declare the data type because that's what it is. What it means to be using a statically typed language versus JavaScript, which is a dynamically typed language. All right. So going back to apex and our data types, we've got our booleans. Date and date time are pretty similar. I'm just going to say date bt and if we wanted to just give it a value of equals, so we've we give it a value of today, we could do that. So because all of these, uh, when they have that capital letter in the front, when you see the capital D, they are classes. And just like we've talked about earlier in some of our videos, classes have properties and methods. So because we've declared something with the, the date class, we have access to all of the date properties and methods. And one of those is today dot today to assign the current value of date dot today. So if you wanted to learn, I would highly recommend you take some time, Google and go look up your Apex class methods for dates, for date time, for string. There's a lot of built-in features to the Apex programming language that are very useful for you to solving some of your day-to-day -day challenges. So date, so if we wanted to do date time, Again, I'm just going to call it uh, DT again, and we could assign that a value of date time dot now, right? That is just so. Now we're going to have not just today's date, but also the exact moment in the system when we uh, assign the value to that date time. Your decimals and your doubles, right? They are just always going to say, if we do a decimal, I'm going to call it deaths, and I'm going to assign to it a value of 1.1, right? So, hey, in memory, we now have a value of 1.1. And now as we declare these, so I'm going to switch that. We're going to work with our integers. I'm going to type in integer, give it the data type, and I'm going to name it num1. I'm going to say I'm going to give it a value of 100. I'm going to declare a second integer. Name it num2. I'm going to give it a value of 1. So again, in, in memory, we have two values. We have got a value of num1 and num2, and they we have variables with those names, and they point to values in memory of 100 and 101. And what this lets us do now is work with those variables. So now we could do some sort of a computation if we want. So if we declared a third primitive integer, I'm going to name it result, and we could set that equal to the value of num1 plus num2, right? And if we did, if we went to our system.debug and we did result, so we'll compile this.
scroll back up and we're going to run our primitive data types. And you can see our debug log gave us a value of 101 because we assigned at runtime. So initially, we, I mean, we didn't assign, right, you know, a value in here initially. We said, hey, this is equal to the value of these two things in memory. So that is how we can then use our other variables to do other calculations, other computations. And so that's what we're going to work with. You're going to work with a lot is a string. We're going to call it words. And I'm going to say, if we're going to name this one hello. And I'm going to give it a value of hello. And do a string. We're going to do another one. Call it world. And, you know, we're going to give it a value of world. And then if we do, again, we're going to declare a third variable, type string, name, hello world. And what we could do is concatenate these. And so we're going to give a space in there. So unlike before where we did, uh, because it was integers when we did math with them, right, when we do this, uh, I need to put that into some sort of, hello, we're going to go uh, put that in the debug log so we can access the value. Compile, anonymous apex, run. And you can see we that printed out to the debug log that the value in the variable, hello world, was the string, hello world. So these are all of your fundamental Apex data types, how we declare them, how we use them in variables and how, so if I wanted to show a quick, how that lets us do computations. So if we went back up to our method that we declared primitive data types, and I gave, so in, I, in an earlier video, we talked about parameters and that parameters are sort of local variables that are only available in that method. So if I said, hey, it's going to take a Boolean and we're going to name it do, do calc, and then it's going to take num1, and it's going to take two integers with the names num1 and num2. And now let's if we had a, and I know we haven't talked about if statements yet, but just so if we had a if, right? And say, hey, if, so an if is saying if a certain condition is true. So we're going to say if do calc, so if the value of the, the variable do calc is true, then in the debug log, give us the value of the variable num1 and the variable num2. We're going to compile that. Open up our anonymous apex again. And so we're going to give it, so now we've, we've called our primitive data type method, which you remember now takes three parameters. So we're going to say, True, 10, 10. And when we ran that in the debug log, that gave us the value of 20, right? Because it said, if this first value is true, then give us the result of those. But if we change this, false. Hit run again. You see, we don't get it because it never went into that condition because the Boolean was false. So that's how we start to combine all these, right? That's how we start to use the variables and then use those as the building blocks of our larger programs. So I really hope this was useful. Uh, if you have uh, any thoughts, questions, please let me know in the comments. And I said, we'll try, I think, the next video to do something on collections. So thanks very much, and hopefully this helps you uh, progress a little bit in your Apex Salesforce developer careers.